are a designated recipient for uh, FTA's Enhanced Mobility of Seniors and Individuals with Disabilities. Um, I'm not going to repeat that. We're just going to say our Section 5310 program. The purpose of these funds are to assist uh, private nonprofit groups in meeting the transportation needs of older adults and people with disabilities um, that we ourselves may not be able to meet. Funds are awarded to eligible subrecipients uh, through a competitive selection process uh, who have projects readily available to meet the goals of the program. So currently, our funding availability for this program through our, 60, our 5310 funds are um, a total of $727,113 that combines federal fiscal year 2021 and 2022. A call for projects was issued on June 22nd and applications were due by 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, July 20th. Um, we received four applications, two from Sipsil and two from Real. However, they did not submit those applications by the 3 p.m. deadline. So they unfortunately were not able to be reviewed. The two remaining applications for SIPSL were reviewed and evaluated, and these are those results. <coughs> SIPSL submitted a, two projects. One was purchase of service for a total project cost of 297113 They also submitted another project for mobility management at $200,396. Okay. Um, their overall scores on the right-hand side, um, purchase of service received a overall score of 8360 with mobility management at 8.40. Those applications were reviewed based on um, project needs, project benefits, local financial commitment and their budget, along with organizational preparedness and technical capacity. We selected SIPSL's purchase of service at their um, total project budget of 297,113 and mobility management at their scalable amount of 100,198 for a total award to SIPSL of 397,311. The total federal share of that amount will be 377,705. Please stop me at any time if anyone has any questions. Our recommendation is uh, that the Administration and Finance Committee recommend the Board of Directors to authorize the Chief Executive Officer, CEO, or designee to approve the awarded projects for CCRTA Section 5310 program for our 2023 call for projects for federal fiscal year 2021 and 2022 to SIPSL. Any questions? Has to be questions. Are we going to reopen this to receive more projects? Yes, we are. Okay. We're going to be issuing a, another call for projects either November or December of this okay. year. Great. Is there a timeline that we have to, to issue these funds, I guess, to, um, to other bidders? I think because I guess we have about a $350,000 remaining. Is there a timeline that we have to, to issue those funds to, to people? No, we receive, when these funds are apportioned and obligated to us, we have the year that they are apportioned with another two years, so a total of two, okay. three years to make sure that we um, do a call for projects and select those applications that fit within the needs of the program. Okay. I, I will add, we generally piece together several years, that way we have enough money to fully fund the projects they request. We, we've got significantly more in the last couple of years than we have through history, but by putting the, a couple of years together, then we have enough to, like I said, to fully fund multiple projects, usually from you know, Pisano, Real, Sibsil, things like that. So okay. the that's last why time, we, we tend to wait. The last time we did a call for project was in 2021, and that amount was significantly higher only because 
of COVID. So FTA dispersed a lot more than we usually receive. And in years past, we've had to wait two to three years to do a call for projects to have a significant amount for those agencies um, that submit application. And it's, you know, worth funding. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Did we? Did SIBSO also submit the proposal? I'm trying to remember. 2021. They did. Okay, that's who we're with. All right. Any further questions or discussion? Is there a motion to recommend the board of directors approve awarded projects for CCRTA Section 5310 2023 call for projects for federal fiscal year 2021 and 2022? So moved. Thank you. Second. Right. Thank you. And we have a second. We have a first by. Vice Chairwoman uh, Jimenez and a second by Director Munoz. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Uh, committee Chair Report. I would like to pass the baton to Director Canales <laughs> since I'm just taking the reins here. And I also would like, please forgive me, uh, Marisa, just let the like to reflect that we have in person uh, Director Canales and Director Ramey. And anything? Thank you for doing such a great job and making this so easy. Thank you, uh, Director Allison, and <laughs> welcome aboard. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there, no, nothing new, uh, so you're caught up and good to go. Thank you so much. And I do appreciate staff uh, fortifying us with all of the uh, extra documents that we've requested for comparisons as we get into the budget committee or budget meetings next. Um, any other comments or questions? Uh, with that, I will call the meeting adjourned. Admin and finance adjourned at 8.57. Roll call. Do we have roll call, please? Eloy Salasat. Here. Gabby Canales. Beatrice Charo. Here. Armando Gonzalez. Here. Erica Mamie. Present. Mr. Chair, we have a quorum. Safety briefing, Mr. Esparza. This is three in a row. I hope we got it. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, everyone. John Esparza, Safety and Security Administrator. In the event of an emergency, we're going to exit the boardroom to my right, your left, to proceed to the west stairwell down to the first floor, where you exit through the west side doors. Once outside, we will continue to the clock tower adjacent to the transfer station. Marisa will account for all the board members. I will be the last one out to ensure everyone gets out safely. Three things to remember during the emergency. Please do not use the elevator. Please do not return until the all clear has been given. And if we need to shelter in place, we will do so in the west side stairwell. Thank you all. Item three, uh, Marisa, do we have any receipt of conflict of interest affidavits? There were none received. Opportunity for public comment? There are no public comments. We're going to item five, discussion, possible action to approve operations and capital projects committee meeting minutes of July 26, 2023. We have a motion. So move. We have a motion by Ms. Chato. Uh, do we have a second? Second. Do you have a second? Mm -hmm. Second. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. Any other discussion on this item? 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item six, discussion and possible action to recommend the board of directors authorize chief executive officer or his designee to award a contract to ETC Institute for National Transit Database Passenger Miles Travel <laughs> Sampling Surveys. Mr. Robinson, good morning. And Great. a joke. Oh, yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Well, the other day a friend of mine came up to me and he said, you know, are you a scratch golfer? Proudly I said, yes, I am. Every time I hit the ball, I scratch my head and wonder where the heck it went. <laughs> okay. you're, impro you're improving, Gordon. You're improving, Gordon. You're improving. And uh, directors, I would also like yeah, to the announcement, announce please. that uh, after doing our national search and interviews, Gordon has been selected as our next managing director of operations. So, thank you. It's his first joke officially as a managing director. All right. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Talked to Gordon yesterday. I said his game's got to improve. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Big leagues now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So don't be scratching your head. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. So um, this item is related to a requirement by the Federal Transit Administration. Every three years, they require agencies our size to conduct a statistically valid passenger miles traveled sampling, which is under the National Transit Database Program, and this is common among all agencies are size. So agencies uh, like us report data on key metrics, including passenger miles traveled, uh, UPT, which is unlinked passenger trips, uh, vehicle revenue miles, vehicle revenue hours, operating expenses, capital expenses, and so forth. So this is just one component that actually goes into the formula where we receive the apportionment for funding for uh, urbanized and, and rural areas. In terms of the identified need, the 2023 year is a mandatory year, so we have to do the sampling this year. And what we did was we're strategic in our approach here. We're, we're picking October as our time because that's our highest ridership month. So we're going to get the biggest bang for our buck. So we're going to spend the money to get the checks done out there on all the routes, all the trips, at all the stops, all the transfer stations. We're going to use that data not only for PMT and NTD reporting, but we're going to use it for measuring uh, ridership at those locations for bus stop amenities and things like that, uh, even Title VI analysis, equity analysis. So this is a good thing for the agency here. And so after uh, the approval of the award, which will be at the board meeting um, on September 6th, the project will commence shortly thereafter with the notice to proceed. And then we'll be gathering all the data that's needed for the surveys, sending that to the project team. And then the surveys will start in October. And as I mentioned, it's a very thorough check. It's 100% ride check, so we're going to check everything out there in our system in terms of our fixed route services, which includes the Flex 93 as well at Texas a and Corpus Christi. The completion date is about December 31st. We want to try to finish by the end of the year, of course, to have the data all, all complete and ready to go for our next reporting year, which will be used um, in, for the 2023 report year due April 30th, 2024. So, so again, this is all lining up very well for us to get all the work done. The RFP uh, that was issued um, was um, on June 21st, and three proposals were received on August 2nd. So the firms that uh, proposed were was ECC Institute, which ranked the highest at 89.80, the Kita Enterprises Incorporated, which ranked second at 83.24, and then Xylo International Group, which ranked uh, third at 61.07. And in this, we looked at the approach, the work plan, the qualifications or references, experience, and price, of course, and, and we scored everything in accordance with those criteria. For the uh, DB and financial impact, no DB requirement with this uh, project. Uh, and uh, the estimated cost for the ETC Institute, which is the top top ranked uh, firm to complete the NTD passenger miles travel sampling surveys is $85,315.12. Funds to support this contract are included within the approved fiscal year 2023 operating budget. In terms of the recommendation for the committee, staff requests that the Operations Capital Projects Committee to recommend the Board of Directors authorize the Chief Executive Officer or designee to award a contract to ETC Institute for NTD passenger miles traveled sampling surveys. And that concludes my presentation. 